can you hear me? So I'm going to show you the results presented in this paper here by the PRG collaboration about testing Lorentz invariance uh, violation uh, with the data. So that's the layout of the talk. I'm going to give you the motivations, explain the method, show the results, and then conclude. So as you know, the postulates of relativity plus causality implies in Lorentz invariance, which means that the laws of physics are invariant under Lorentz transformation. This by itself would be a reason that uh, we test the Lorentz invariance because it's one of the pillars of modern science, let's say. However, when we try to unify the forces we understand in nature, this, in this cartoon, the relative intensity shown as a function of energy, uh, we know that we can unify some of them, but it becomes very hard to make a quantum field theory of gravity. And that one of the most promising hypotheses is that if we allow a small break in the Lorentz invariance, therefore, if we allow a Lorentz invariance violation, it becomes a little bit easier to unify uh, gravity. And the effects of this unification are only possible or are expected in the highest energies where we cannot test with our laboratory tests, but we can test with ultra high energy cosmic rays. So the method itself, we do the simulation, the calculations under a certain ultra high energy cosmic ray scenario of the propagation of the particles in the universe. And then we can calculate a flux arriving on Earth and compare uh, to data. We have done that uh, in two sectors, as we call the electromagnetic sector that only involve electromagnetic interactions. And for that, we use the photon flux limit measured by the PRG Observatory. And in the hadronic sector, that involves only hadronic interactions. And we have done that using the energy spectrum and the X-max distributions measured by the OG. The two main challenges of uh, this uh, method is first and most important of all, to have excellent data. I'm not going to have time to explain to you the beauty of all this data collected in the last two decades by the PRG Observatory. I can only tell you that we are going to use the energy spectrum, the X-max distribution, and the limit on photon flux. Ask you to read these papers uh, to enjoy the beauty of the data. And I'm going to show you some examples of the uh, second challenge of this uh, method, which is to solve all the interactions under Lorentz invariance uh, violation. Uh, we had, that was done previously by protons because people believed in the past that only protons were arriving here on Earth at this energy. So they calculated the propagation for Lorentz invariance violation for protons, but not for nuclei. Therefore, we had to do it uh, recently uh, for all nuclei so that we could make uh, the analysis. We are going to follow a phenomenological approach for Lorentz invariance violation by changing the energy dispersion relation as shown here in black, according to the relativity by an extra term, a term that is uh, perturbative and suppressed in energy in such a way that you recover the standard relativity equation of energy, momentum and mass for a given particle uh, species at the lowest energies. So for general, for normal relativity, this delta here, which are the Levy coefficients, which allow the break uh, of the Lorentz invariance uh, symmetry, are all zeros, zeros. But in our analysis, we are going to allow them to be different from zero and search for an upper limit or uh, measure them. This is done again perturbative, so we have different orders, different terms of this expansion to test independently. So we do this simulation, which is uh, already implemented and done uh, with under Lorentz invariance. So nuclei interact with the photon backgrounds, uh, breaking into lighter uh, nuclei. The protons, both produced in the first interaction or in the source, also interact with uh, the photon backgrounds produ producing pion. These pions decay. They decay into high energy photons. These photons interact with the photons in the background, producing pairs. All of these have to be, therefore, implemented in Lorentz invariance violation, allowing a certain value of the break in each interaction. And you can see that uh, uh, the, the physics change, and therefore, the number of particles arriving on Earth is going to change under Lorentz invariance violation. And we can test both cases uh, with the data. I'll show you some examples on how this interaction changes. This is the mean free pass of the pair production. So photon interacting with photon uh, giving a pair as a function of energy. The black line shows the Lorentz invariance case. And when we start to add the possibility of Lorentz invariance violation, increasing the terms 
the, the, the value of the terms, we see a very different uh, uh, profile, a very different uh, value of uh, uh, the mean free pass. The mean free pass increase, increases uh, very rapidly, uh, meaning that uh, photons can travel much further. The universe becomes more transparent to these photons. They can reach us, uh, and therefore we have more photons arriving here to compare with our data. Another example, the pion attenuation lens uh, as a function of energy. Again, the black line is the Lorentz invariance case. We add certain values of break and we see an increase again. So here, delta hard stands for uh, the hadronic uh, sector as delta gamma for the electromagnetic sector. And I'm showing you the, just the values for the first term. So the zero here means the first term, but we have done, of course, for all the other terms that we, we can do the full calculation. Another example, the helium photon disintegration under Lorentz virus violation. This is the energy threshold for which the interaction occurs as a function of energy, the Lorentz variance case, and the different values of delta hard increasing very much uh, the threshold. And proton, again, we did for several primaries the calculation and we interpolate uh, among them. Once you have this uh, done, you can then uh, calculate uh, this propagation uh, other analytically for the simplest case or we're using Monte Carlo simulation for the most complex one that gives you how transparent the universe is uh, to a given interaction. Another example here, this is how uh, the Lorentz invariance violation changed the pair production. So we have this energy threshold for the pair production and then we, when we include the violation for the first order, you gain an extra term here that goes inside the limit of this uh, integral that's the integral over the cosmic background that the interaction occurs. Going to the results, we have to assume a scenario to do the calculations. This is a scenario, the standard scenario uh, we used for the analysis. So the sources are emitting a power law with a given index and an exponential cutoff above a given rigidity. The sources are distributed uniformly in a cosmological evolution given for this equation. And then we had to assume the propagation, different models for propagation. These are models for cross-section, and these are models for the EBL on the way to Earth. And because we compare the data with uh, the X-max distributions, we had to assume different hadronic interaction models to simulate the X-max distribution. So we have basically four ingredients in our ultra-high energy cosmic ray uh, scenario. For the electromagnetic sector, we tested two scenarios. The first one, we name it the OJ standard Lorentz invariant scenario. So these are the parameters that we calculate from the OJ data published in this paper under Lorentz invariance. And you have here, so the index of the spectrum, the rigidity cutoff, the evolution of the source, and the fraction of each of the primaries leaving the source that best explain the OJ data under Lorentz invariance uh, assumption. And we allow it to an alternative scenario that we call proton enhanced from this reference, which is the maximum amount of, of uh, proton allowed in this fit that stills, still reproduce uh, the OJ data uh, according to this publication. And using these two scenarios, we set limits on the Lorentz invariance uh, coefficient, coefficients. This is the integral of the flux as a function of energy. Here you see the data from the Pierre Huger Observatory that has never measured one photon, never identified one photon in its data. Therefore, you only have upper limits on the photon flux. And this is the result of our simulation. It's starting here from the Lorentz invariant case, very few photons arriving. Then you increase the break, the universe becomes more transparent, more photons arrive. But even in the extreme case where photons would uh, not pair product anymore, make no pair anymore, we predict a flux which is much lower than the flux measured by uh, uh, so the upper limits set by the PRG observatory. So we cannot set any limit on delta by using this data under this scenario. We then changed it for the proton enhanced scenario. When protons propagate, when you have more protons than nuclei, you create more photons. And again, starting from the bottom line, you see the case of Lorentz invariance. Then you increase the break, you increase the break more break, more photons, up to the point that you add too much break and you get more photons than it's allowed by the upper limits by therefore setting the maximum value of this break that is allowed by the data. We did that for the first term in the expansion. We did that for the second term in the expansion. It's exactly the same. 
uh, idea, but now, of course, the values of delta are different because we are getting another order in the expansion, and for n equals 2, we can also set uh, limits under the proton-enhanced scenario. For the hadronic set, there is a completely different independent analysis. We fit the data, the energy spectrum, and the X-max uh, distribution. Uh, this fit is a standard uh, analysis in OG, but now we added one more parameter, which is the Lorentz invariance break, the coefficient. So we search in our data for the best description with a value of uh, delta hat different from zero. I show you the result here. This is the total deviance as a function of energy. You can see that there is a minimum here for a given value of uh, delta hat, but uh, we did not get too happy with this minimum because the total deviance is too large. This means that even if we have a, a minimum uh, in the total deviance here, doesn't mean that we found the Lorentz invariance violation, but that we can use this minimum in the relative deviance here to set uh, an upper limit on the value of delta with five sigma uh, confidence level. And that's what was done. So going to the conclusions, for the electromagnetic sector, under the OG Lorentz invariance standard scenario, no limits can be set. Under a scenario which proton enhanced flux, we managed to set these limits. These are the numbers. And for the hadronic set sector, uh, our data is better described with uh, so a five sigma uh, confidence level can exclude uh, these uh, values of um, uh, delta hat. And to give you an idea, it's very hard to compare different uh, values of uh, break in the Lorentz invariance, uh, the Lorentz symmetry. But uh, in this paper here, we try to make uh, all the experiments together. Each experiment has a different systematics. Moreover, they depend on models. It's very hard to get a Lorentz variance limit without model dependence. They are always model dependence. Each analysis depends on model in different ways. So there is no trivial way to compare the results I just showed in the previous slides with previous measurements uh, as shown here. But just to give an idea, uh, the previous values range between 10 to 29 to 10 to the third one. And with the analysis I just showed to you, we managed to set limits on 10 to the 40 or 10 to the 38. So there are very good uh, limits for the, I show here for the first uh, term in expansion, similar uh, conclusion would be done for the, the n equals zero, n equals uh, two. Uh, and moreover, these are the first uh, uh, Lorentz invariance limits that have been set consistently using ultra high energy cosmic ray data. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Ah, I'm sorry, I have a list. Hi, Vitor. Thanks a lot for these nice results and congratulations. Uh, clearly, it's a bit outside my field. Uh, can you comment on slide 25? Uh, about the shape of your uh, um, predictions, how you have um, those uh, wiggles, yeah, 25 or uh, 20, yeah, I mean, all these models that are below the OG um, sub, um, upper limits have a lot of wiggles. Is this physics or is this um, it's numerical it's instability? It's statistics. It's the statistics. You can see that the, the ones that make more photons don't have the wiggles because we have more photons. The ones that we produce a, only a few photons, you start to get the, the views. It's just statistics in the simulation. But we didn't care to make them more smooth because they are so far away from the data that we wouldn't get anything from uh, getting it more smooth here. Yeah. Okay. Don't see any other questions. No.